one's green. Oh, looks like the uh, it's spring has sprung. Uh, well, no, no, it hasn't. It's springing enough. Wait. Green is green. Wait. What? It's global warming. Good thing the planet's already dead. We should conscript other farms, then sell them their own crops at huge markups. We're not I'm sure I can dig one up in my spare time. Genius. Who said you we're not doing that? I've already brought this up to you like four times. We're not engaging in that kind of capitalist behavior. Well, the first time he brought it up, he was easing you into the idea. Now he's bringing it up as a legitimate suggestion. No, Piper. Point the way. Talk. Okay, I'll be here then. She's good at that. I said, I said of talk. Of course. She loves to do Oh, that. I'm pressing the wrong one. You know, you look like you could really use this. These things have literally saved my life. Milk? That's very kind of you, Piper. <gasps> The milk of human kindness! <gasps> oh no, don't tell, don't tell Strong. Don't tell Strong. Don't tell Strong. How the hell did someone like me luck out and find someone like you? Go away, Piper. I've been with my fair share of men, and I've learned that sex is something you control. But love is never on purpose. Okay. Um... Anyway. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of people here. Why are there so many people Watch here? Watch your back. It's a thriving settlement. Man, this guy's got the drip, though. Combat helmet <laughs> and a tweed jacket. Hell really? yeah, man. You gotta, you gotta go to battle style. Looking sick. Also, are those penny loafers? Shit, dude. I'm jelly. I keep seeing there's a place called Vault 81 over here, and I really want to see what it's all about, you know? Is that... Are those cherry blossoms? Ooh, I think they are. It definitely is spring, isn't it? Odd that this tree is blooming, even though it's, like, fallen over. Well, it, it's just slanted. Yeah, it's a whoa. Um, hello. Oh, is that a bee that got caught in the matrix? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's kind of cute. Hmm. Oh, someone killed that spitter bee and put it on an invisible spike. It's kind of cute though. Maybe if it were active, it wouldn't be so cute. Oh, and all of its little babies. Oh, they're they're, they're kind of really cute. I'm assuming that turret killed it and they glitched. I don't out. want them to be mean to me. Oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> yeah. No. That's cute. That's uh, I mean, that that one's kind of horrifying. The other ones are kind of cute though. Uh, even the horrifying one is kind of cute. All right, let's go find this vault. The definition of ADHD is many thoughts, head filled with bees. Can't tell which rooms are food. Well then, stop right there. I've studied over 200 species what? of fungus, and I will let you know which ones are good to eat and which ones will help you sleep. Where are you? Oh, she's in the store here. Oh! Hey there, name's Naya. If you want some advice, some gear, or just someone to talk to, I'm your girl. Just five caps per session. Sick. What are you offering? Better to ask what I'm not offering, because I do it all. But if you want what's on the main menu, that'd be my Commonwealth Survival Guide, a must-have for any would-be adventurer. If you can't afford that, I sell bits of advice for five caps apiece. Limits one per day, though. Um, okay. Uh, I want advice. My advice for the day is, make good choices. That was te- Well, I didn't make a good choice on that one, because that was terrible advice! Alright, looking for a vault, he said, wielding a Thompson with- Is that a bear? That looks like a bear. Is, is that a also, bear? Is it also impaled on a spike? Uh, is oh, the- so you want to play with me? I th Whoa! Okay. <laughs> I was just- Oh! Ow! Oh, 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 it's mutating! Ah, ah! Oh my god. The legendary bear is known for remaining still for prolonged periods of time to lure victims. You know how the whole thing, like a grizzly bear, you're supposed to pretend like you're dead? That grizzly bear was pretending like it was dead <laughs> so that it could attack me. I see. How did you know about this vault being out here anyway? Uh, I had heard about it from some of the locals. Ah, maybe one of the vault owners came by. Yeah, somebody in Diamond City was like, hey, go check this place out. Oh, uh, you gotta. Ammo, weapons, and messy death. I got it all. Uh, what kind of stuff you got? If it can chamber cock and spit out lead, then I sell it. I sell slashers and clobberers too for those maniacs that like it up close. But hot uh, death flying faster than the speed of sound? Oh, my knees are getting weak just from thinking about it. A triple barrel chiapa, a pilot laser rifle, mach huh. machine gun? Spray and pray, that's broken as hell. Oh, is it? Bullets explode on impact. Holy shit! Oh, do you not know about that? Spray that is broken. That's God's tier weapon right there. 
Try it out in combat. Oh shit, you have a Mark 23? Try that out in combat too. Okay, well, we're buying like two different things today. Or oh three. my god. Someone changed the assault rifle. It's substantially better now. I didn't think it was possible to be worse. This is still based off of an M249, but it looks like it's got an M249 heat shield. It definitely has the M249 pistol grip and the M249 stock. And it's got the drum magazine you love so much. I mean, I don't... I don't hate drum magazines, but I'm definitely not a huge fan of them. It's interesting because the M249 can actually feed from a magazine as opposed to a belt, but the magazine feed ability on an M249 is uh, dubious at best. Mm. In my personal experience, it doesn't really work great. It's basically for emergency situations only where you just straight up don't have any more belts and you need to get ammo out through the machine gun, but it always caused problems for me. I like this a lot better than the, the base game assault rifle. One of the... Okay, I am noticing a kind of weird thing, though. Safety select lever? There's a safety select lever there, but then there's also a cross-bolt safety like there would be on the actual M249 or M240 Bravo, but it doesn't stick out on the other side. You gotta be double safe. It only goes in... It only comes out... And why would you print Made in USA on the inside of the dust cover? That seems a little <laughs> strange, too. Yeah. Um, I like this a lot better because it's based on one gun as opposed to, like, six guns that they mash together that would have absolutely no reason to be stuck together. Mm -hmm. It's still a little too wide, but I like that it's called a machine gun now instead of an assault rifle. Okay. Because that, the, the base game assault rifle is not an assault rifle. That is like a light machine gun. Gotcha. So this, this looks a lot better, and that is 100% a pistol grip and a trigger guard from an M249. That is a stock from an M249. That's a handguard from an M249. The, the heat shield is reminiscent of like an M60 or an M249. That optic is weird. I don't particularly care for the optic, but what are you going to do? So when you push that safety button in... You're not going to be able to unengage the safety. It, it probably disengages when you pull the trigger. <laughs> Let's do what's inevitable and head back to base so well, we not, can... Not right now. We gotta get, we gotta get in Vault 81 now, first. We'll touch the door and we'll walk away. We'll, we'll right. come back in a minute. Also, we just found this thing. The, oh, hell yes. The SOCOM. It's a freaking Mark 23 SOCOM. You have no idea how badly I want one of these. You gotta put a flashlight on the front of it. Otherwise, it doesn't have it the does, distinct it shape. Needs, it needs a laser aiming module. It needs a laser aiming module. God, I love this gun. So this is, this is actually like the precursor to the h and USP. And they made this pistol for US SOCOM in like the 90s, I think. It was part of the, quote, offensive weapons program, which was, let's give someone who maybe doesn't need a rifle, let's give them a handgun that is suppressible, very accurate, and capable of being their primary weapon. Give them a handgun that can do some damage. It's really big. Like, this is as big as a Desert Eagle. But you hate Desert Eagles, but you like this. No, no, I don't hate Desert Eagles. I just think a Desert Eagle is kind of pointless. To be fair, I kind of think this is pointless too. <laughs> okay. I love this gun, but I think it's kind of pointless. Why do you love this one, but you don't care so much for the Deagle? Because uh, the Deagle is just ostentatious. At least this was created for a purpose other than just being big gun. Okay. Yeah. This was made in 45. That was one of SOCOM's requirements, that this pistol had to be made in 45. Why was that a requirement? Uh, because they wanted a cartridge with uh, a lot of kinetic energy behind it. Don't you use our gun to fire a 9mm. It's going to shame our gun. Yeah. Well, also, because 45 is easier to suppress than 9mm. Oh, I did not For know that. 45 is inherently subsonic. Most 45 ammo is right at or below breaking the speed of sound. So, 45 is easier to suppress. Oh, all right. Uh, no, this tactical stock doesn't... That's a tactical... That's a folding stock for a Beretta 93R. Eh, Why did... How did they... Enough. How did they put it on the... No, I'm not putting that on there. <laughs> they say a death clock can run 30 miles an hour. That's why we should build this settlement 31 miles away. Don't worry, <laughs> I did the math. You're a genius! That's a Streamlight TLR-1, and that wouldn't attach the way it's attached there. That would actually go on there. That was pretty cool. Oh, hey, Mark 23 suppressor. Hell yeah. Okay. That's made by Knight's Armament. You, you definitely say it. There you go. There we go. The laser aiming module. Laser aiming module with muzzle brake. Laser... Oh, why can't I do laser aiming module with suppressor? You need another level of sneak. What? I need... What? No. All right. Yeah, no. We're just giving myself that. <laughs> you know. We're just giving myself that. Uh, you got the SAS, SOCOM, I don't know which one that is, Fox, hey, Foxhound. Oh yeah! Uh, Military Science Frontiers, Diamond Dogs. Outer Heaven. Outer Heaven, P-51, 
Peace Walker. So Peace Walker with oh, the exclamation point. <laughs> Asshole. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Huey. <laughs> Fuck you, Huey. The suffering of Kaz. Meat. I don't know what, what meat is. Can't really see. I don't know who that is. Spin yacht. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> this thing is huge. Look at the size of this gun. I see it. It's large. It's in charge. Oh, God. Even with the suppressor, it still sounds chunky. Damn. Oh, God. I'm going to have so much fun with this pistol. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Spray and pray. That is, that is definitely a Thompson. Um, can I change the... It's a Thompson, but man, if you've never used this thing before... Ooh, we can put the... Yeah, I've never really used this, so we'll, um... You should. You shouldn't, because it's gonna break the game balance, but it's, it's there for anyone to use. Yeah, alright. Yep, that's got a bottle on the end of it. <laughs> the spray and spray has, like, a, a Nuka-Cola bottle silencer suppressor. Well, that's just silly. That is, that is very silly. At least it's translucent so you can see through your shooting at. Yeah, I'm probably, I'm probably gonna take that off. Yeah, let's start making our way back to Vault 81 and give Spray and Prey a chance. You'll see. I mean, shoot a couple of cars, I'll die. They'll explode immediately. Yep. Woo! <laughs> exactly! Yeah! Okay! The car detonator! Why is this a grenade launcher? <laughs> Why is this just a mini fully automatic grenade launcher? When there are cars around. I am scared to use this anywhere near a single living thing that is not immediately hostile towards me. Hey, look, enemies! Ah! So you want to play okay, instantly me? dead. All yep. Right. Yep. Who is that? Doesn't seem to be hostile, but let's ask. Hey, what you doing out here? What are you all doing out hey. here? Hello, fellow traveler. What Come, the? take a seat by the fire and take account of this glorious beast. It's an albino rad stag, a very rare condition. Caused by a genetic mutation. Not that rare. Of course, we won't tell that to the members at the club. Will we, Ludwig? Ha 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 I suppose not, sir. Good, <laughs> good. Which is precisely why we need to kill every other albino radstag in the Commonwealth. What? And burn oh. any evidence of their existence. Why? It's the only way to ensure our kill is one of a kind. You... In fact, if you'd like to help, I'll give you caps for every rad stag hide you find. Ooh. After all, even the common ones might be carriers of the gene. So, so we have to kill every rad stag? Uh, it really makes you that happy? Of course. It's more than a discovery, after all. It's a once-in-a-lifetime achievement. And there's only one way to keep it so. Extinction of the rad stag species. I... Like, what the... Well, now we can't bring him any pelts, and he didn't seem to care. Hey, how's it going, buddy? I'm not much of a hunter. I can track with the best of them, though. Um, well, you're fired. So, and he only had 57 caps! What are you gonna pay me? I'll put your name in the lodge and- ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see? That, uh, it's a powerful gun. Very Green powerful. piece of meat. Not, maybe not as good as my blue gun. Oh. No, I think it is. Uh, yep, it is. Yeah, they just get This jumped. gun trivializes this game. Yes, it does. I thought the Halo weapons we found earlier were overpowered, but this is ridiculous. And it's a guaranteed spawn, too. She just has it. She just has it on her. I never bought it from her. So you never knew how overpowered it yeah, was. She just has it. What the f- <laughs> Yep. This weapon and Overseer's Guardian are just overpowered. The other members often chide me for my lack of hunting experience. I'm sure that will change once I show them this. Radstags tend to graze in areas uh, with plenty hold of water. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna kill these water. things again. Oh, so come this Whoa! Civilized. <laughs> Whoa! Ah! Ow! <laughs> Damn it! Radstags tend to graze in areas with plenty of grass and fresh water. They're not unlike farmers in that sense. Except, radstags tend to be more... civilized. Ha ha ha. Good one, sir. <laughs> I don't have any more questions. I- hopefully I'll- I'll have some on me. So don't hire anybody else, I'll get you all the ones you need. Well, no need to hurry. Mutations are very slow to act, so we have time. Of course, history has a long lifespan, so we don't have forever. 
Goodbye. See, now, don't you wish I had kept on killing random rad stags? You no. told me not to do that a long time ago. No, but if... I don't wish that you had killed more rad stags because rad stags are glorious and noble creatures that deserve a happy life. But we could have had the pelts already. We can get money anywhere. We don't have to get it from that joker. Uh, fair. Woo! Shooting bugs with a 45. Oh my god! Might be a bit overkill. Oh, I like this gun already. Hello, who's talking in here? Ooh, hel hello. Hey. Y'all huh? living in here? How's it going, friend? You're welcome to join us. Pull up a patch of dirt, stump, old tire, whatever suits you. Take a load off and <laughs> stay a while. The good fellowship's on the house. The drinks are how I keep body and soul together. Can I get you something to drink? Oh, is this a bar? I don't know. What do you have? My selection is a bit limited right now, but take a look. Uh, no thanks. Limited indeed. See, this is this is your bar, huh? Run. <laughs> Dude, you could have wait, uh, wait until we're not here to do that. It's about time to pack it in, and then I think. Hey, you ever thought about joining the hive mind? <laughs> no doubt about it. I was about to make a make a make a staple joke like, oh, this guy's got the the, the staples of alcohol, but you know. keep <laughs> thinking it's about time to pack it in. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's Come go. Come on, pack it in, everybody. <laughs> hey, there's a rad stag. Let's kill it and get the skin. No, it's not albino. It's a normal rad stag. He didn't care. He just wants skins. I don't know. Let's not. Oh, look, it's friends. They don't Hello, have skins. little friends. We, like, we could kill them, but they don't have skins. No, they're friends. I love them. Ooh, that's a little weird. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just ignore that. But hello, little friends. I like you. All right. So I was at work the other day, and we had a P2000 at work, which is um, it's another handgun made by H&K. And like most of H&K's handguns, it is effectively a derivative of the USP. Okay. It's like an upgraded and slightly smaller USP. And I, I love, I love the HK USP series. And also, by association, the Mark 23. Mm -hmm. I love all of those guns. They're, ooh, what the hell? A little shrine. Oh. Oh, did you, did you bury your friend? It's a raider, oh, kill it! <laughs> Why are you shooting? Oh. Wow, wow, wow! <laughs> they were burying their friend, you assholes! That we probably killed earlier. I, and then they buried themselves! <laughs> Convenient. Hey, look, an AR-15. Neat. Here you go. Hey, nut to butt, everybody. Nut to butt. Nut to butt. Get he in the grave. Should have dug this hole a little deeper. It would have helped us out. Yeah, the raccoon. Dude, the raccoons are gonna get in here immediately. You gotta <laughs> dig it deeper. So we have this P2000, and I was like, oh man, I really want to get a P2000. And I went to one of my coworkers. I was like, yeah, tell me, tell me why I shouldn't get this one. And they're like, you're asking the wrong person, man. We only make bad decisions here. I'm like, okay, fair enough. And I was talking to them about it, and they're like, "Oh, I can tell you why you shouldn't get one, because we have two HK Mark 23s coming in." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh God, don't tell me that." They're like, "Yep, we got two of them, two of them coming in." You're gonna have and, your pick of the litter, and they're not even for a special order. So you can like, buy them. Every single time we've had one come in recently, it's been for a special order. Like it's been for someone that ordered one. But they just had some you could take. Just had some coming in, and I'm just like, "Oh God, you shouldn't have told me that." How much? Okay. How much is the Mark 23? Oh, so you want to And they me. said five dollars. Right. It's like two thousand oh. dollars. Cost for a Mark 23. They sell for like three grand. Eesh. They are not cheap handguns. Eesh. And I'm just like, oh god, that's a good deal, I guess. Oh god, I want one really bad, but that's a lot of money. If I get one, can I just put it on layaway and pay it off slowly? <laughs> And they're like, yeah, 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 that's fine. You can do that. Anyway. Uh, uh, all right, all right, all right, fine, fine. That is, that is what I'll do. Uh, Ow. Know. That thing bit me. Good thing mole rat bites don't do anything. I put a gun up on consignment. I was trying to sell it. I go out to fill out the paperwork to put in a special order for one. As I'm filling out the paperwork, someone comes in and they're like, hey, I want to get that gun. The one that you have on consignment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, excellent. <laughs> My gun sold for like 1800 bucks. Now I, I, I basically have one on order. As soon as it comes in, I only owe like $400 left on it. So I'm just like, how did this work out? How did this happen? I feel like I've made this comparison before, but you guys are like a conga line of Kermit crabs passing down one shell. <laughs> 
Oh, and then to add even even further coincidence to it, I currently have a 9mm suppressor that's mm. made by uh, Soundsico. It's the Soundsico Omega 9K. I love that suppressor. It works really great. One of the reasons I bought it is because Soundsico was running a deal that if you spent over a certain amount on a suppressor, you submit the receipt to them and the paperwork saying that you bought the suppressor, and they send you another one for free. Okay. They say it's, it's a cheaper suppressor. It's not like the best, but it's a it's a decent one. Mm -hmm. So when I bought the Omega 9K, I submitted that and then I got a 45 suppressor. Okay. I was like, you know, I, I don't have a 45 caliber suppressor ready gun at the moment, but at some point in the future, I could have one. And like worst case scenario is I could shoot nine mil through the 45 suppressor. It's fine. Okay. So I already have a suppressor for the Mark 23 SOCOM. <laughs> So I'm going to have a Mark 23 SOCOM with a suppressor on it, like, as soon as it comes in. You seem to be happy about <laughs> that. I can't believe this happened. I'm so tickled about it. No way is this worth it. Yeah, this is totally worth it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Where's his friend hiding? I heard him. Is he down there? You see him? <laughs> Orbital targeting laser engaged. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, man, I can't even tell you how happy I am about getting a Mark 23. It's, it legitimately is You can't even tell me. You can't even tell me after I, telling me for half an hour. For a half an hour. Yeah, just the fact that I've talked about it for this long <laughs> should be indicative. I have wanted a Mark 23 SOCOM since I played Metal Gear Solid. I've wanted one so, it is legitimately, it's what I call one of my grail guns. It's, it's a holy grail. It's like, I've wanted one for years and it's just, I don't have the money to get one when I see one. Or, when I have the money to get one, there's none available. Hmm. That bunny down there. Is that a bunny? Oh, it's a bunny! I guess it is. A bunny! Hop boing, away! Boing, 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 boing. I love bunnies. Hop what? right into that thing. What right the there. fuck is that? What is that? That's Hang an, on, where's it's, the 249? It's another bunny. That is not a, that is not a Banui. It's that a, is a horrible look, monstro- It's got long ears. That is not. Look at the long ears. Those are not ears. Those are horrible. What? Yay, bunny! <laughs> that is horrifying. And he's hopping away. Hop, hop, hop. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It won't even tell me what it is. Some kind of- Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I just did that preemptively. I'm sorry, whatever you were. Let's dissect it. Rad horner? Some kind of goat thing. That is not a rad horner. Mm. I'm sorry I did that. I feel terrible about doing that. But also, I was really worried for what might happen. The horns, it's the horns. The horns scared me. Okay. We put him out of his misery. He didn't have skin. It's it's one of those things that it's, they, don't, they don't make a ton of them. Right, so you've mentioned. Yeah, they make more of the VP9s kind and the right. P30s and all the other ones because they, they sell better. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot of people that are willing to dump like $3,000 on a handgun that at best is going to be a range toy. But some will. Some will. Some, like me, who are giant idiots... <laughs> <laughs> we'll spend entirely too much money on a 45 caliber, quote, offensive weapon system. <laughs> I love guns and I'm bad with finances. Exactly. Give it to me. I make poor financial choices. Any All right, let's go into Vault 81. Anything else you want to talk about these guns before we go in? Anything else you got to get out of your system? I don't think so. I think I got pretty much everything. Okay. I like this gun. All right. It's a, oh, it's polygonally bored barrel. Did you know that? I didn't. It's yeah, that means if you look at the rifling in a barrel, you'll notice that the rifling is usually cut at 90 degree angles. On this one, if you look down it, you notice you can't see clearly defined rifling. It's actually little tiny curved hills. The advantage of that is that it increases accuracy, it increases uh, muzzle velocity. The disadvantage is it's harder to do. Mm -hmm. Also, I think this one is a chrome lined barrel too, which makes it easier to clean and it gives it better longevity. Okay, I'll take your word on that. Yeah. It's, man, this gun is so cool. I freaking I love this gun. All right, into Vault 81. One of the things that always kind of drove me nuts about the M249 is the manual of arms for an M249 is you open the feed tray cover, pull the charging handle back, which locks the bolt to the rear, push the charging handle forward, because the M249 fires from an open bolt. It helps the machine gun cool faster, and it's usually good for machine guns to fire from an open bolt. Uh, anyway, yeah. the manual of arms is you... Pull the charging handle back, push the charging handle forward, your bolt is now locked to the rear. Lift the feed tray cover, put the rounds on the feed tray cover, close the feed tray cover, and now you're, now you're ready to go. When you clear an M249, what they want you to do is pull the charging handle back, push it forward, make sure that there's no rounds in the barrel, or on the feed tray cover, or inside the receiver, close the feed tray cover, and then put the weapon on safe. Makes sense. 
I always argued that what you should do is... Fire all the bullets. No, no, no. I always argued that what you should do is... Dirt, the, the clearing procedure is open the feed tray cover, remove the rounds from the feed tray, lift the feed tray up, make sure there's not a round in the barrel, mm. close the feed tray cover, ride the bolt forward, so like pull the trigger and let the bolt go all the way forward. Because oh. you have now made sure that there's not a round in the gun. You have made sure there's not a round in the gun. Let the bolt go all the way forward and then leave the weapon on fire. Because with a 249, I don't think you can engage this. If I recall correctly, you cannot engage the safety on a 249 if the bolt is all the way forward. The reason I argued for doing that is because if the bolt is all the way forward, even if you open the feed tray cover and put, a, put live ammunition on the feed tray cover, there is absolutely no way that ammo can go off unless you grab the charging handle, pull it all the way back, push the charging handle forward, and pull the trigger. It's weird that it doesn't let you engage the safety when the bolt's forward. Well, because normally, if you were firing the machine gun and the bolt is all the way forward, it is currently firing a round and it is about to, the bolt is about to kick backwards. Mm. So there would be no reason for you to engage the safety. Basically what that would require is you have to pull the trigger and then while the bolt is moving forward, you have to be fast enough to engage the safe to release the trigger and engage the safety while the bolt is moving forward. Yeah, there should be a different safety then. Double safety, second safety. The second safety is the fact that it's an open bolt machine gun, so that you have to you have to pull the bolt all the way back in order to fire it. I the reason I the reason I argued that is because the amount of times that I saw someone take apart an M249 that they had just cleared earlier, mm. and they Forgot that they had pulled the charging handle back and the bolt is locked to the rear. So they take the stock off the gun and then the main spring goes boom and launches out of the back of the gun the moment they try to take it apart. Oh, okay. Because they forgot the bolt was locked to the rear. <laughs> because people are stupid. Yeah, well, maybe if these guns are made with a consistent design and they have to juggle all this stuff in their head. Not everyone is as gun savvy as you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know. That was just always my... my personal belief. I find it interesting that this has a selector lever on it because the M249 does not have a selector lever. Mm. It's full auto all the time. <laughs> it is either on safe or it's on full auto. That's it. Fair enough. I, I'm trying to think about what machine guns have like selector levers. Semi-auto machine gun. I don't know. There's not that many of them. I know the uh, Falsy Miega 42 has a... I don't know. If, I don't think it's a selector. I think that one has a dual trigger assembly. No, I'm thinking of the MG34. The MG34 has a dual trigger assembly. So you pull the first trigger, the one on the top. It's it's a trigger that has two scallops cut in it. Mm. You pull the first trigger, the one on the top. That one engages semi-auto fire. You pull the one on the bottom, and that engages full auto fire. Okay. But like the 249, the 240 Bravo, neither of those have a selector switch. I know there's some. There are some machine guns like the H and K. Um, the HK MG5, I believe that one has a selector switch. But usually for machine guns, there's, especially with open bolt machine guns, there's not really a good reason to put semi auto. Not on really, them. no. Just because, like, open bolt machine guns, when you pull the trigger on an open bolt machine gun, you have all the mass of the bolt moving forwards. On any type of open bolt gun, there's a delay in between, a very small one, but there is a delay in between when you pull the trigger and when the gun goes off. Mm. And the delay is larger on open bolt guns because the bolt has to move forward, chamber around, and then fire. So th during that entire time, you're moving the your very small amounts. You're moving the gun around. Mm. The the mass of it shifting is moving the gun. So generally speaking, open bolt guns are going to be less accurate than a semi-auto gun. Mm. So generally speaking, there's really no reason to do a more accurate semi-auto only <laughs> mode on an open bolt gun. Just because you're not going to get the accuracy out of out of a semi-auto so they just usually leave it on leave it on full auto also it it, it aids in simplicity they just don't want to burn through all that ammo very quickly cuz changing a drum mag is a pain in the ass sometimes uh, i guess yeah i guess you could argue that sometimes it is anyway yeah enough talk about this thing i let, i have to say though i have to say that i like this thing a lot better than the base game well assault rifle this is much better the lever on the back on the very back is a safety Okay. This one right next to it is the decocking lever. So you had to be able to carry this pistol. One of the requirements is the pistol had to be carried either cocked and locked, which is round chambered with the hammer all the way back and the safety on, mm. or it had to be carried without the safety on and it decocked and the hammer forward. Okay. So that when you draw the pistol, you have to engage a double action trigger pull. The hole on the front is for attaching part of the, uh, it's where part of the laser aiming module attached to, oh. attaches to. That rail on the front is actually not a Picatinny rail. It is a proprietary rail that a proprietary laser mounts into. Wait, it doesn't look like a Picatinny rail. No, it, it, it isn't. 
But yeah, it's freaking beat. Like, the spring... Okay, so this is one of the things I love about this gun. The spring on the inside that connects to the decocking lever on any other gun would just be like a little piece of wire. It would just be a little wire spring. Mm. On this one, it's like a three-stranded braided wire. <laughs> so you wouldn't pull it out of a mechanical pencil. No! It's like the, the spring... Uh, when I say like a little wire spring, it's just like a little curved piece of wire. The, the one that's on this is three strands of wire that are braided together and then built into a curve. It's so overbuilt. <laughs> this gun is just overbuilt to hell, and I love it. Mm. And again, it's one of those things that's it's like how I it's like why it's like how I described the Desert Eagle. It's ostentatiously big. <laughs> yeah. It's loud. It's expensive. Mm. And for some reason, I want one real bad. S I, oh, okay. I, I love this gun. The original versions of this gun actually had a thing on them that was, you could lock the slide in place so that you could fire it. Do you ever play um, in, in, in any of the Metal Gear Solid games, the like the tranquilizer pistols, how you have to fire them and then manually rack the slide? Yeah. You basically had to do that with the original version of this gun. <laughs> All right. You, you didn't have to do that. There was just a mode that you could engage where it would do that. Okay. That was the M9 in that game, though. Yeah, that was the M9, and then in one of the other ones, it was the Mark 22 Hush Puppy. But yeah, this thing is, this thing is freaking chunky. Do you know? Speaking of speaking of Metal Gear Solid, do you know why they used the Desert Eagle and the Famas in Metal Gear Solid, the first one? Because they were the very only boxy way you and get old. In this job. Oh yeah, did, did, did I discuss that before? Are. Probably. Yeah, because they're just a big box, and it was super easy to render them. Yeah. Yeah. Two, four, nine, and up. Yeah, I changed the heat shield. That definitely looks like a two, four, nine heat shield. Uh, two, four, nine doesn't have that. Uh, Muzzle and sight. It doesn't have that front sight on it. The rear sight looks like the rear sight from a. It looks kind of like a knight's armor in rear sight, which is a little interesting. But want to change their front sight then? Uh, no, you can't. You can't. Yeah, the only thing I can change on it is put different scopes on it, and I don't like any of the scopes. Eh. Yeah, all the scopes are like. Bleh. It's already. It's already actually a quick eject drum mag. Oh, all right. Isn't that interesting? You know. Yeah. The laser aiming module on this thing was an experimental laser aiming module that was designed by Wilcox. I saw... No, I've never actually seen one of those for sale. Never, I, I take that back. It was an experimental laser aiming module. I forget what the exact nomenclature of it is. It's like a peck something. It didn't last very long. The bulb that's on here is incandescent. And from what I hear, it's not very bright. And then it does have a visible and then an infrared laser. And the visible light on the front of it has a cap that you can attach that makes it an infrared aiming light. Oh. So for use with night vision goggles on. The version they actually went with is made by Insight, and that one is the Pack Six. Well, that's how many are in a six pack, so probably. Um, and the Pack Six is again, it's a visible, uh, a visible light, visible laser, infrared laser, okay. and I believe there's a way to put a filter on the front of it to change it to infrared light, so that you can use it with night vision goggles. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's. The other, uh, the other reason for adding this stuff to the front of it is that it adds, a, a, like, a counterbalance to the gun. So it, it helps control recoil on it. Okay. Um, and I think, if I recall correctly, the red laser and infrared laser are both slaved together. Which means that when you adjust one of them, it adjusts both of them. Ah, okay. So you don't have to, you don't have to adjust two lasers for two points of impact. The both lasers are, gonna, are aiming for the exact same spot. Gotcha. Yeah. Maybe the back of this vehicle has something useful in it. Ooh. Ooh, what do we got in here? here? 50 MG. Oh, a bunch of ammo. A Saiga. Brett's fine. Yeah, pipe weapon. A skeleton. 